Good morning, my name is Jacob Folger. I'm an artist and a sculptor, and today I'm going to show you how to make a mermaid. We'll get started right away. First, we need to do the head of the, uh, of the mermaid. The reason why I do the head first is because it tends to be, if it's going to be any difficulty in this project, it's going to be making the face and the head. And I'd rather make that first than uh, make the body first and then uh, try to struggle to make the head the right size. So I'm going to make the head first. And so what I'm going to do first is, is I'm going to press into the clay like this with my thumb to create the, uh, the eye uh, indentation of the face like that and then this is coming down will be the the uh, nose and, and a lot of this is just pinching I'm gonna pinch here to begin the nose and then I'm going to press here at the base of the or tip of the nose like that and then maybe just pull this out a little bit to give the uh, a little bit more definition to the nose and just uh, smooth it out a little bit blend it in you know by dragging my fingers across it the uh, features of the face what I can do here is take a uh, wood sculpting tool. It's got quite a bit of clay on it. I've been doing a lot of sculpture lately, so I'll just take my um, fingernails and go over it and kind of clean it up a little bit. And then what I'll do is I'll start down here and I'll push up. to uh, to give the uh, the look of the um, upper lip and the mouth and then I'll do that again underneath to create the bottom lip now this will take a little bit of practice if you've never done this before I'm just gonna just form it a little bit here. And for something this small, um, I'm going to uh, just do uh, a hint of eyes. And so I want her eyes closed. And so what I'll do is I'll take an X-Acto knife here and I'll just uh, drag it like that to create the uh, the look of closed eyes try to get that even with the other side just smooth it out a little bit and you can uh, you can squeeze it a little bit to kind of give it little higher cheekbones there like a, a female face might have and this does I admit look a little bit masculine it tends to be easier for me to do a, a male face and then a female face and it just sort of comes out but we're gonna work on it as we go here a little bit I'm going to uh, push this bottom lip up a little bit so give her more of a look of a uh, closed mouth as opposed to open as it is now I 
you, if you're running out of space on the bottom, um, you can uh, take a small bit of clay like this uh, at the bottom uh, where her chin would be, and you can add a little bit of clay. Uh, to uh, to give it the look of a of a chin. And then just blend it in all the way around. And uh, you can take the tool again and just uh, blend it in here. I'm going to show you some ideas about maybe obscuring the face a little bit when you do something that you're not used to because you shouldn't let the lack of ability to sculpt a, a face, uh, you know, stop you from making things that you want to make. So, uh, I'm going to show you about that because I have to do it myself because I, I, there's not, I can't do everything. I mean, I learn as I go, just like everyone else. So again, it does have some uh, masculine qualities, but when we add the hair and a little obscuring in our sculpting, uh, it will probably look better. So there we got the got the basic head. Now let's talk about a few things. Um, um, this clay that we're using is self-hardening clay. Um, you can get it at the art store or a craft store. When you buy it, make sure it's soft. Open the box, press on it inside the uh, plastic that surrounds it, the plastic bag that surrounds it, and just make sure it's soft and pliable like that. Um, it does have a shelf life. Sometimes it will dry out. Okay, we're going to put the head over here out of the way. And we're going to go ahead and start the uh, mermaid's body. And um, sometimes it's just better to sculpt a mermaid or something like this on top of um, something like a, a handmade rock. So that's what we're going to try to do here. So what you do is you start off with a ball of clay. You can squeeze it. Uh, to uh, get it to a round, uh, somewhat round shape. You can take your thumb, you can smooth out um, imperfections in that. But we're going to have kind of a, we want it to look like a stone, so we don't want to like make it all smooth and pristine. I don't think it's up to you. So basically pressing it against the table to um, flatten the bottom here. And uh, just basically uh, don't worry about getting it smooth and pristine uh, because we don't need to do that right now. Okay. I'm just smoothing it a little bit, trying to get to the shape I want. So we've got our basic stone here. Sometimes having a board to work on like this, uh, this is just a part of a 2x4, um, is, is a good idea. Um, but I don't like to stick it to it. I don't want uh, the clay stuck to the board because I want to be able to pick it up and, uh, and work on it. 
so I, I don't want to stick it up uh, you know press it down real hard now I'm gonna take a piece of clay here just move this out of the way for a minute then I'm gonna start working on the body and the tail of this mermaid so I'm going to roll like this a shape kind of like that and this will be the this will be the tail and I'll add the fin later and this will be the beginning of the uh, upper part of the body and what I'll do is I wanna put it on the stone in such a way that it's smooth and flowing I don't want it to uh, I don't want it to uh, be straight out, you know, like that. I want it to be smooth and flowing. So um, I'm just going to do that a little bit. And you notice I have her um, sitting kind of on the side of the rock, not right in the center. Um, and what I'm trying to produce here is some artistic form um, which you can learn you can learn this even if you've never done this before you want it to look natural and uh, interesting and artistic and so that gets us sort of started there but what I'll do now that I've got it there I've only I haven't pressed it on I'm gonna take it off for a minute I'm going to take my X-Acto knife or a sharp blade, a paring knife would work also. I have a cup of water here, which you'll need also. And I'm going to dip it in the, uh, the water uh, to get it wet. And I'm just going to score the stone where the, uh, the tail is going to go. And then I'm going to score, I'm going to wet it again, and I'm going to score the uh, the uh, tail, the beginning of the tail, and uh, just uh, this would help help it adhere better, like that. And I'll press that into place now. There we go. And I'm going to uh, just see how my head is looking. It's um, looking a little small, actually. But we can slim this down in a minute. Then we're going to take uh, a piece of clay here to begin the torso. And you can just wrap it. You can see I'm wrapping it onto the lower uh, part of the body like that. Just wrap it and then blend it in. And we're getting basically now to the top of that. I just want to bring it somewhat to a point uh, to give some definition of the neck of the mermaid. And then the head will go on top of that. But let's just, I want to just kind of see how that looked. Um, Now I'm just going to take my uh, my thumb and I want to slim down the tail a little bit. Give it more of kind of a sleek, slender uh, appearance. And you can uh, do it on both sides. like that 
just slimming it down you can take your thumb and drag it down the the uh, expanse of the tail just uh, smoothing it out now I'm gonna do the breasts um, and uh, you know all this will take practice you may not be able to get it the first time around and actually I still have trouble with breasts sometimes um, sometimes it works out sometimes it doesn't I don't want these to be real big um, and you can obscure the breasts also depending on your own uh, uh, you know way that you want to express that you can obscure it with her hair you can uh, obscure it with an arm uh, you could take two very small seashells and put them on top of it and then you could use real seashells and just uh, make sure you later on you uh, seal them in with a little bit of glue because otherwise they might fall off and uh, so basically all I'm doing is rolling uh, two balls to create the breast and you can leave you can leave the, uh, the breast bare also I mean it's just you know it's gonna be up to you what makes you feel comfortable and you can just blend You can uh, use your sculpting tool. Sculpting tools you can get at an art supply store, a craft store. Um, sometimes they sell them single, you know, singles. You pick out the shapes you want. They come in different shapes and sizes. There's another one. And um, And, uh, or you can sometimes buy a package of them, eight or nine different ones. For me, doing breasts, I, you know, I just have to work on it. Um, if, you're, if your clay is drying out while you're working, you can have a misting bottle like this and just give it a little squirt and that will and you can squirt your clay that you're working with the head also give it a little squirt that will um, just keep it moist um, it's you know coming into the colder months of the year that means the heat is on if the heat is on it's blowing warm air into the house and and it's going to dry things out there we go now I can I can press on the waist here a little bit. I know this is not perfect, but um, pressing on the uh, on the waist here a little bit just to slim it up a little. All right. We'll get the head on next, and that the way to do that is to take again the a sharp knife, score the two parts that you're going to join with a wet uh, knife like this I'm gonna drop this down take it off the board see that's how I like to be able to take it off the board I'm going to take the head and I'm going to score uh, where it will join wet and score this just makes it more solid now this clay, by the way, when I say self-hardening, what I mean is self-hardening. It's going to... So after the head is on, using um, a wetting and scoring your knife, both parts that you're joining, um, you can take your tool and just uh, blend it in. Blend in the head, uh, the head to the neck. And uh, do that all the way around. Sometimes when you're working on a sculpture like this that's three-dimensional, it's easy to forget the other side. The other side is left 
<laughs> requiring a lot more work. Got a little bit wet there. It's blending. I can use my fingers, I can use my tools. So again, self-hardening clay means that you do not have to fire it, you do not have to cook it. It will dry hard um, in a day or two. Okay. And uh, and then you can paint it. And I will uh, I'll, I'll do a link to a playlist for uh, I think there's four of my other videos that um, show you how to do some really beautiful museum quality finishes um, on your uh, your mermaid, or you can just hand paint it any way you like. Okay. Just trying to make it look sleek and comfortable. Um, now I'm going to uh, create uh, two arms. And again, I'll show you some of the ideas I have about that to obscure the breast. And I just roll this between the palm of my hand, palm to my hand, uh, to create basically a long noodle and uh, you want it to be uniform. Let's move this back so you can see how I'm rolling this. I'm gonna pour a little water on it. I like to keep everything moist, but I don't want to spray it until it turns into a mud pile either. So just keep that in mind. And just roll this nice so it's uh, fairly uniform. And uh, And then you can just uh, stick it on. It would be best maybe in, to uh, score it, wet it and score it. And you can do it like that. And then you can just, uh, you know, have her hand resting. You can bring it across um, her breast if you want. Yeah, I'm going to wet it and score it, but I'll follow my own rules here. I'm not even following my own rules. Sometimes it's easy to do that when I'm teaching. Because, uh... Okay. There we go. And I'm just, I'm not too worried about the exposed breasts. I actually, most of the, all the mermaids I've ever made, they all have exposed breasts. Um, not putting a nipple on the breast um, also just uh, leaves them more um, subdued. I'm not trying to embarrass anyone, but you know this this is art. Okay. Sometimes you got to say things, you know, that might. Uh, you know, people might not appreciate. But that's how you get the message across. I'm rolling another arm here. Just trying to get it uniform. You, if you look at this closely, you can see it actually starts to crack. This is drying out, so you definitely want and it's dry, uh, dry air in here, the cold air outside. Uh, Peter's going, and so you can, uh, you want know, to wet and score the knife where you're going to join the two pieces of clay. There we go. Maybe I'll just put this in her lap. Like that. Uh, 
Um, I, when, I, when I make a video like this, if you're wondering how I'm doing this, I have the camera between me and the object so that I can keep an eye on the operation of the camera and everything and that I can see what you're seeing. It seems to like the best way for me. And the only problem with it, it's kind of a clunky way to do it and it makes it difficult for me to sculpt and so I always, not always, but sometimes I'll apologize if my piece looks a little rough. So now I'm just kind of getting that form her head relaxed. I don't want her to, I don't want her to look jacked up. I want her to be relaxed because you know life is relaxed actually. You know what you see in nature and in us. You know grandpa sitting in his uh, snoozing in his easy chair. He's all sprawled out and you know He's not jacked up looking like he's sitting at attention or anything like that. Okay. So now we're going to do the hair. And I want to talk about the hands for a minute. You can take a knife. These hands are tiny. Um, but you could take a knife and you could, uh, you know, put in an indentation or a line to create what looks like fingers. I rarely do anything with something this small. Um, I don't usually uh, do that for me. But you can take the time. I, I can sculpt hands, but usually for something this small, it just uh, it's just a lot of a lot of work and frustration, really. Um, and when I'm teaching somebody like this on a video, I don't I don't usually. Uh, uh, you know, teach how to sculpt hands on something that small. We're going to do the hair next. And uh, there's a lot of different ways to do hair. Usually what I do is I take individual noodles of clay, lay it on, and just naturally kind of drape it down over the shoulders. I'll show you how I do that. So I'm going to just move this back out of the way for a minute. And I'm just going to uh, roll a noodle like that. You don't want to make it too skinny. You want it somewhat moist so it's not cracking on you. Start on this side and just basically lay it on top here. Where where the hair strands would go. And then just coming down. And at this point, I would not worry about how the hair is going to lay against the body, but more about joining the hair to the head. And then you can model it later. You can, uh, you can, mo you can, uh, you know, form it later to the to the shape that you want. Again, we're keeping our clay as moist as possible, but not soaking wet, muddy. We don't want it muddy. I'm laying the strands on. I roll them individually. I want to keep the clay moist, so I'll use the the sprayer. Give it a squirt, but I don't want it muddy. And I'm just going around like that. I just want to relax. And you can see now, you should be able to see now, she's starting to look more effeminate. The face was somewhat masculine. 
you know I still need practice Every, everyone needs practice the the hair the uh, the face was still uh, masculine uh, but it's uh, it's actually looking less masculine now and again you know you practice this will be your maybe your first mermaid but then you uh, you do a couple more and they start to come around start to look more and more realistic get some more clay there roll a noodle I'm gonna go ahead and give it a squirt if I give it a squirt before I roll it the moisture is pushed into the strand of hair then uh, and then I can snip it off here and then you can just play with it depending on what feels good as far as the um, the way the hair lays on the head and the body just tuck it in like that and then turn her head down a little bit more see how it looks in the back and press it in there a little bit more and there's other things you can do uh, to make it get it to where you want it to be you can take a tool and you can uh, score the hair to give it a look of strands of hair like that And just go all the way around you can fill in the gaps here with uh, strands of hair and uh, okay so we're, we're getting getting the hair in there you also can take uh, you can take a, a tool you can take your exacto knife <clears throat> pardon me or or your tool here and you can just very close to the to the scalp of the head you can uh, draw little lines so that it more it kind of in a way joins it so that it looks like the hair is actually growing out of the head like that It's kind of giving it somewhat of a natural appearance. You'll probably want to take your um, a, a tool like this and blend the hair, just the edge, just the edge that comes in contact with the body. Not really smoothing it. Not like you would join uh, the tail to the stone here, where it's where there's no gap. You want it to look a little bit like a gap. And just uh, join it so that it, it uh, is less likely as it dries to crack. And as you're letting this dry, by the way, you should cover it loosely with plastic for a day or two. Just so it dries slowly. Because, again, you know, with the heat, I mean, you might be watching this in the summer, for all I know. But... Um, when the air conditioning is on, but right now it is not the air conditioning is not on. It's uh, Today is actually uh, Halloween I believe it's Halloween But uh, adding you know little strands of hair with a sharp knife or uh, a sharp wood tool 
can actually give it a really nice appearance. I think I prefer the sharper wood tool. We're going to um, sit her up on the board here for a minute. And I'm going to show you how I would uh, finish the tail. Um, it's going to move the board, give us a little bit more space. I'm going to do it that way, I think. And, uh, and the way to do this is to take, give everything a squirt. That, and uh, what I do, I, I do tails different ways. But what I usually do is I'll take a piece of clay about this big and I'll roll it a little bit beginning in oblong shape. I'll bring it to a somewhat of a point by just squeezing it like that. So it's kind of like that. And then uh, just lay it on uh, to the uh, bottom of the tail and blend it in. Um, and of course, in this case, wetting and scoring it would be a good idea. And then uh, just blend it in like that. I'll do the same thing for the other uh, side of the fin. I don't want it that big, I don't think. The beauty of clay, you know, you can just break pieces off and add pieces and take pieces away. It's just uh, very versatile. I used to be a wood carver, and I'll tell you what, it didn't work out that way. It was not that way. It took very time consuming, you know, weeks and weeks to do one piece. We want everything to be nice and smooth and free-flowing. Blending in. Nope. You could turn up the edge of a point at the end of the fin. You can turn it up a little bit, adding more life to it. See that from your uh, from your view there. And thin this down a little bit by just squeezing it. And just a simple design there. I like to leave my mermaids mostly smooth. I'll, I'll put some pictures of some other mermaids I've done. You'll see that. Put them on the video here um, at the end. Um, and uh, but you can also just if it's for you, it's for your, it's your mermaid. You might want to uh, put scales on here. Um, it's. For something as small, I, I wouldn't do it, I don't think, but you could take uh, something like this and stipple it like that to give it the appearance of scales. I'm just going to smooth that out. But I just wanted to show that to you. You can go online, Google, uh, do a Google search on mermaids. And uh, you can uh, look at the mermaids there and get ideas about how to do what you want to do. And so then uh, to get everything uh, nice and flowing, you can take a paintbrush uh, like this and dip it in some water, dab off the excess water, dab it off so it's not soaking wet. You can dab it on a paper towel or a towel or um, whatever piece of wood 
and you just uh, then just go around and take your time take your time enjoy the nice uh, silence or put on a nice little bit of music and take your time and go around and uh, paint out all the imperfections and little scratches and sculpting marks and this actually helps join everything and makes it stick all together a little bit better you can also do the hair even though you've added uh, texture to the hair you can do this and then you can also go back and add it again and and just keep on working it and just take your time and that is how you make a mermaid and uh, please see my uh, playlist of other videos that you can uh, that shows you how to do the finishes the finishes are really beautiful um, if you like the video please uh, hit the like button comment say something about the video about what you're thinking or that sort of thing and uh, if you like this sort of content uh, please subscribe to my channel I have 300 videos of all kinds of how-to videos and uh, thank you again for watching and have a great day